Hey, what's up, good people? This is Fired Up KC. We are here at k Radio Station, and I got my boss here, Mr. Chris Good, in the house today. Make some noise for Mr. Chris. Oh, ooh, this is, it's about to be fire. It's about to, I'm so, I'm, I'm honored for, to have you here today. Yeah, I'm honored um, to be here. Thank you for saying yes to come today, because this is about to, uh, we're about to have greatness in the house today. Absolutely. And by the way, I've watched a, a couple of the videos on YouTube just to get ready for this. It's awesome what you're doing. I really love that. Um, man, thank you guys for tuning in. This is Fired Up KC. Uh, it's the only show that brings you motivation, inspiration, just to inspire people to pursue purpose. Now, I got my, my main man here, Chris Goody, the founder of Ruby Jean Juicery. Chris Good, yes, Chris Good, the founder of uh, Ruby Jeans Juicery. Um, he is inspirational. He actually is more of a natural juice, and it's you're about to hear his story in a, in a, in a minute. And man, I was inspired uh, by just watching. I've watched it probably like ten times, just one video, just like being inspired by the work you do. It it really inspires me. But yeah, let let people know um, what is uh, what is Ruby Jeans and how did that start? Oh man, short version. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My man, my grandmother, uh, my late grandmother is Ruby Jean. Okay. Um, she died at 61 from type 2 diabetes. Uh, never had the understanding of health and yeah. how to treat her body from a nutrition standpoint or from a fitness standpoint. Yes. Um, and ultimately, she unfortunately ate soul food for 60 years until wow. it killed her in her 61st year. Wow. Um, and I took the pain of that and channeled it by way of a long, long winding yeah. road into... Uh, encouraging people to live healthier by way of a absolute contradiction yes. knowing that my grandmother never she never got into health um so just telling people a real story that exactly. uh, is my family's story by way of losing my grandmother um and sharing her story with the masses and hopefully they they get the just the desire to say yes. hey i at least want to try to be healthy yeah um so Ultimately, yeah, it's named after my late grandmother. Wow. So now how did you, like, uh, get passionate about juice? Because you say you like juice. How did you get all into that? Juice. Uh, so, I, you know, I played football through college, okay. and I was a relatively fit person just by way of working out and yeah. having muscle memory and those exactly. things. Um, but I ate pretty much whatever I wanted to eat. I would just spend three hours in the yeah. gym. I'm like, oh, I'm good. Let's go get a, <laughs> a pizza, a cheeseburger, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, – you know, I, I would travel for work for about four to five years. Mm -hmm. And in my off time, I would travel with my free points and yeah. go see friends. And I had a couple of buddies that moved from Kansas City and St. Louis to L.A. Okay. So I'm visiting these guys and I get to L.A. I'm all hype. I'm like, yo, I'm in L.A. I want to do yeah. all the stuff that tourists do when they're in L.A. Yes. Um, so I get to L.A. And I'm all excited. I get in the car, I got on my new sunglasses that I bought just for this trip. You yes. know, I still got the sticker on them. <laughs> and, and they're like, hey, man, welcome to L.A. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, where, where are we going? And they're like, oh, before any of that, let me tell you what. Uh, we're not going to eat today. Yeah, Whoa. exactly. My eyes did the same thing. And I'm in the back seat. And I was like, wait, what? Where, where am I at? Wow. And so they explained Dang. to me that they were doing a uh, seven-day juice cleanse. Oh, and dang. I and I thought to myself, okay, self, you you visited the wrong place this weekend, <laughs> you know, because I'm completely foreign to juice yes. or any of that. Yeah. Uh, so the next day, they showed me a documentary called "Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead," mm. um, and it just, you know, I would recommend it to anybody. There's two parts. Watch part one, mm. um, and it really, really resonated with me. Yeah. And wow. it basically showed a guy that was struggling with his health that had really good finances, really good access to health care, yes. uh, but found himself taking several different types of prescription medicine daily. Mm. Uh, and instead of continuing that cycle, he said, yes. you know what? I have the best doctors. I have the, all the right answers around me, but nothing's yes. fixing me. Yes. So he did his research and he landed on juice cleansing. Mm. And he decided to juice cleanse for 60 days, for two months straight. Wow. No solids, just fresh, raw fruits and vegetable juice. And I watched this documentary, and I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, like, man, by the end of the documentary, he changed his whole life. Mm. And I'm thinking, so he was able to change the trajectory of his life in wow. 60 days, but my grandmother literally in 60 years never had mm. that moment of clarity, moment of come to Jesus, whatever you want to yes. call it, wow. and for, it killed her. Wow. And so it, it struck a chord with me. I came home, did a 10 day juice cleanse myself. Mm -hmm. um, I don't recommend that to anybody right out the gate. <laughs> it's a little aggressive, you know, for your first time, 60 days, that's nuts. 10 days, that was difficult. Mm. Um, Is that like a, a Daniel fast 
kind of ish. Uh, not really. Not really. Uh, okay. Daniel fast is what like nuts it's and vegetables, grain. Vegetables. Yeah, you don't eat anything that's like maybe a sugar or uh, carbs, basically. Well, vegetables. so on the juice cleanse, it's just drinking raw fruit and vegetable juice. Uh, oh, for wow. us, it's cold pressed juice. Um, for however many set days. I did my first one for 10 days. I had no clue what I was doing. I was making the juice at home myself. Mm-hmm. The recipes were disgusting yeah. and it was tough. But by the end of that that process, I felt amazing. I felt wow. alive. I felt more in tune with myself than I had wow. in several years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I fell in love with juicing right there, wow. right then and there. Wow. So do you think it was more about the juice or more about the discipline you had for yourself that really changed your trajectory? Um. I, you know, I, I don't think it was necessarily just arbitrarily the thought of juice. Mm-hmm. I think it was the way it made my body feel. Yes. Uh, thinking that I had been healthy for all these years just from working out and being yes. so so physically active yes. and never having that second component of, you know, just eating right. Mm. So adding that component was like, wow, it blew my mind. Yes. Uh, and it just made my mind more clear, more fluid, and more lucid. And I was like, man, this is there's something to this. Yes. And so I fell in love with it, and I started carrying that message to my family and my mm-hmm. friends. And I started visiting juice bars as a consumer literally across the country because wow. I was traveling for work. Wow. And so I fell in love with the culture of juice and health wow. just from being introduced by my boys. Wow, wow. Well, that, that on its own is inspirational. Now, we see you as Ruby Jeans Juicery, big Ruby Jeans Juicery. Now, let people know how you really started. What was uh, that all about? How did you start, like, your first day in doing yeah. this process? Man, uh, so from the time I, I – so I woke up. The, the first time I had the idea, I was traveling for work, uh, yeah. and I, like I said, I had fallen in love with juicing already, yes. you know, from a consumer standpoint. So I was getting, you know, pictures and grabbing menus yes, and yes. going to juice bars everywhere, and I yes. even had a traveling juicer. Wow. Um, and so I found myself on this particular trip. I would work three weeks of every single month in a different city. Mm. And so this particular trip, I was in three different cities. And by the end of it, I was exhausted. And I was in Chicago, Illinois, um, in a suburb outside of Chicago. And I woke up restless in the middle of the night, and I couldn't remember what city I was in. Wow. And for me, it was like... Wow. Man, this is a this is a breaking point. Yeah. You know, I was doing for for where I come from, I was doing really well financially, mm-hmm. but there was something that wasn't at peace in my soul. Yes. Um, yes. And in that moment, I started to to ask God and ask myself, well, yes. man, what what is it? What is it that would, you know, give you that feeling of fullness, of wholeness, exactly. of yes. of contentment? Uh, and I'm looking around the room, and I'm just kind of thinking. And I was like, well, I got my juicer over there, and. Mm went to a juice bar today. I love juice. I love health. Yeah. And looking at my tats and like, man, I miss my grandma. Like, wow. Man, I love my grandma. <laughs> like, man, wow. juice. Man, that juice bar was dope earlier. Grandma, wow. God, I miss her. Grandma juice, grandma wow. juice. And it's like, God was like, Chris, Okay. open a juice bar and honor your grandmother. Wow. And I set up in the middle of the night and start pacing the room like, like what? That, that's, <laughs> Like that's, Dang, is that's that it? for real? Like, and I had nobody to talk to, so I'm yeah. looking around like it's too late to call anybody. <laughs> I'm like, this is what I want to do. Mm. And so I got hype, and the name didn't hit me right away, but mm. I knew that that task was laid in front of me. I knew that I had like really yes. stumbled on my purpose. Yes. Um, and over the next two years, mm. quit my job way too fast. Uh, I took all the wrong steps you probably should take mm. in order to start a business. Mm. Um, I had a little 401k built up, had a little cash saved, okay. not much. Um, took a loan from a friend, charged up credit cards, um, got every door shut in my face, known to man. Wow. Had friends laugh at me. Wow. Um, my mama worried. She prayed with me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My, my pops doubted that it would work. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a lot of obstacles in between this two-year span. Yes. But... I had times where I got discouraged and I would let it fuel me. I would wow. get discouraged, couldn't, okay, this building, I, I, I fell in love with this building. Nope, door closed. Mm. And that happened on and on again until I got really, really quiet and back into like kind of a, a, a pensive meditative state and just like, okay, God, you gave me this. Mm. What, where, where you want me to go with this? Yes. What's the name of it? And it just started to unfold. Doors wow. started to open. And it, about two years from the time that I had this moment, Wow. I opened the doors to our first store wow. uh, at 40th and Broadway, a little tiny 700 square foot space that I literally put every single ounce 
of me, of finances, of grit, of passion, of mm-hmm. of emotion, of tears into yeah. this place and reached the peak of my life, man, July 25th of 15. And, wow. you know, stood next to the, the mayor at that time, Sly wow. James, and an assembled audience of all of my closest friends and family. Yes. People had flown in from across the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, the news was in front of us. Wow. Uh, and it just, you know, it was wow. like a moment that I'll, I'll never forget. And, you know, that was, we just passed four years of being in business, but that was how we started. Wow. So what you're saying is it wasn't better. It wasn't easy. Like it was, cause I, I, I thought it was like, you know, you start one night and the next morning you ruby, you're ruby jeans. That's what I thought. No, so no. Th- tell me it wasn't that easy. No, I mean, when you dress like you and got glasses <laughs> like that, maybe you can do that, but it didn't work out like that for me, man. I No, I mean, it was, it was tough, man. It was yeah. tough. It was you know, it was the culmination of organic research yes. uh, from a consumer's perspective where I didn't even know that this was what I w- was passionate about yes. from this angle. Uh, and it was just pure grit and muscle and mm. and so much thought and concerted effort and failure. Yes. Uh, so many no's to just get that one yes, that mm. one, that first deal. Uh, but it took everything I had. Mm. How were you able to deal with the, the people who said you couldn't do it? Who said, man, there, it's not plausible. There's no, why would you do this? Uh, to be honest, man, initially it, it hurt mm-hmm. uh, because that that perspective was coming from people that yes, I cared about, that yes, I loved, yes. uh, that they didn't have this, they didn't have this desire mm-hmm. or this this idea or this passion or this purpose in front of them. So yes. they, they couldn't even fathom what I was talking about. Like exactly. juice, like, bro, what are you saying? <laughs> like we are in Kansas City, Missouri and you wow. want to open a what? Wow. And it, it hurt me, man. It hurt me because I felt so on fire for the yes. idea. Um, so initially, initially it hurt me. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I sat back, it gassed me up yeah. and not to prove people wrong, but to just know that okay it's, it's time to shut up mm. and go to work yeah uh, so it hurt it hurt it was discouraging um but it, in the end it was really really a huge proponent of whatever level of success yeah. we've reached do you think if you um told people you were going to open a barber shop it would have been easier they would have believed you probably so <laughs> man i'm a black dude like yeah you got a crispy fade like yeah you probably yeah i know tyrone and them over there you probably can get them to cut for you i'll cut i cut hair <laughs> Because I've seen your documentary and it, you were at a barber shop the, the yeah. whole interview. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, maybe if you did that, everyone was like, yeah, you should do that. That would have been fun. Yeah, man. I think as a as a black man, uh, yeah. there are are certain stereotypes and nothing nothing against you know uh, barbering or the beauty industry. Yes. I think it's a phenomenal industry. It's very exactly. important. Uh, it's a, a huge proponent of of what we are. Yes. Um, but I think that it would have been more understandable mm. um, because here I am, a black man, saying I want to mm. open a juice bar mm. in the middle of the city, something that has literally yes. never been done yes. by somebody with this hue in the history yes. of our city. Yes. So now seeing you do what you do and being able to come where you've been, you you are today, what do you think about when people tell other people that's impossible? What is What do you think about impossibility? Man, I, I think that it is such a thing mm. um one of my my favorite taglines man and I, I i talk to kids so much and i tell them that them them that it is possible yes uh i say it's possible yes. but it's um for me it's there is an impossibility with things if it if it's not preceded with passion mm. right mm. if you if you are if you are starting something mm. and you have this this big lofty dream yes. and typically there's like this pot of gold at the end of this rainbow yes. um, and passion wasn't really at the forefront of that 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 dream yes i think that that pot of gold for me is impossible yeah right wow. but if passion is first there's literally nothing that's mm. impossible mm. So basically, what you're saying is they should get fired up. Is that is that is that, is that what I'm hearing you say? That they should fired be- up, baby. <laughs> you're right here, fired up, Kansas City. You got it. Basically, <laughs> cool. I, I mean, man, I just I'm inspired by having you sit in the same room with me because um, what you're doing it's it's motivational. It inspires me as a person to know that I can actually do what I want to do. I can be able to make moves and see it happen. Here's the wild thing about that. Okay. There's like this reverse inspiration that, that occurs in a moment like this because yes. for you to say to me, man, that's inspiring for you to sit here and you to tell me the story, for me to know this story, yes. that inspires me, man, because mm. yes. I look at you, young, sharp, black man, yes. you know, super, super bright future. It's obvious and apparent just by looking in your eyes. Yes. And for me to be able to inspire you, 
man, that's a blessing to me. It's inspiring to me because if I didn't, if I didn't listen, if I listened to those people that yes. said, man, you can't or you won't or it's too much or it's too tall or it's too long of a journey, mm. I don't get the chance to inspire you. So wow. that inspires me, man. Wow. I think, I think I wish you just get a pulpit. Like this is just preaching right now. I just, I want to leave the studio and just run away. Like, <laughs> I just want to run right now. I feel like I just want to run. Man. Okay. This is too much heat. You guys need to like calm down. Okay. This is too much heat. So we'll take a break. Let's take a three minute break. Let me dilute what I just got in right now. So, <clears throat> so we're back in three minutes, just three minutes. Uh, just stay tuned, stay tuned, and we'll be back in three minutes. All right, I'm taking um, – are we, are we on? I mean, I just want to say, again, thank you for doing what you do. Um, thank you for inspiring. Thank you for showing us it's possible to do what you believe in, you know. And it's it's going – it's speaking volumes, even though you might think it's just you doing juice. No, it's not about the juice. It's more about what you being able to do what you do inspires me. And I'm like, man, I want to be like – Chris Good, I really want to be like you man, in my own man. different way, yeah, but yeah, with yeah. that same motivation. Yeah, I respect it. that. Thank you. Man. Um, let me ask you this: uh, what what motivates you to do what you do? Um, a lot, man. Yeah. Uh, you know the fact that the fact that my mom is still punching a clock. Yeah. Right, that motivates me. The fact that you know my grandmother died from soul food. Mm -hmm. The fact that. 11 million people in 2018 died from poor diet. Wow. Uh, the fact that there's never been a black owned juicery in the history of my city. Wow. Uh, the fact that we were able to establish a business in a food desert, something mm -hmm. that no matter the color, no matter any of that, a healthy yeah. establishment in this entire corridor. Yeah. Right. So never the example of seeing something that provides vitality and life and longevity yes. to an entire population of people. Yes. Uh, that inspires me. The, the ability to have a platform to go and talk to young kids that look just like me, that don't look like me, yeah. but that have that same story. Wow. The fact that there is a Ruby Jean in every single family, in every household, wow. in the entire world. Yeah. Right? Wow. Wow. So a lot man you inspired me <laughs> all right my son inspires me yeah uh, this city inspires me man the support yeah. and love of kansas city inspires me there's a you know and just the grace and mercy of jesus christ yes. inspires me so so much inspires yeah. me man wow now let me let, let me ask you this because i think this is important for people to hear um because i know there's a lot of people like myself younger people younger people older people who are trying to pursue their, their vision who are trying to pursue their purpose now, what would you tell them knowing that it's not going to be easy? What would you tell them to how do how do they get to start about doing what they really want to do? Uh, I think it's uh you know, it's like being really really authentic yes. is important. Yes. Uh and that authentic that authenticity is important, you know, to display to other people, mm -hmm. but I think the very first person that you have to display authenticity to yeah. is yourself. Uh, and when you can take a true, raw audit of who you are, mm -hmm. where you are, what what your desires are, what your shortcomings are, what your your strengths are, yes, I think it will lend you to being closer in line with really, really identifying what your purpose is on this on this earth. Mm. Uh, and I think that uh, once you identify that, just do it. Yeah. Like I mean, literally, there should be nothing that stops you yes. until you wake up and you feel like you're walking in line with that purpose. Exactly. Wow. That 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 is gonna preach any day, any time. Uh, what I should do for this show is for the next show, I need to bring a pulpit to this show because you know, <laughs> honestly, because <laughs> it's so lit. Like the the bars and like just the the words of wisdom that you're speaking right now. You know, it needs to motivate people. Yeah. Now. The one thing I really want to change people's minds about is failure. Because a lot of people are scared of failure. They don't want to fail. They don't want to try something that fails. Now, what is your perspective about failure? How do you see failure? Uh, it's a necessary. It's, it's, there's no way around it. Yeah. Uh, I think the only way we get to where we we even get close to feeling like we've succeeded, and I think that's such a relative term in and of itself. Yeah. Um, because for me, I, I'm not there yet. I haven't mm -hmm. arrived. I'm, I'm still hungry. I'm yes. still in search. I'm still on my journey. Yes. Uh, and there's so many obstacles, so many lessons that have come that from the onset, it can look like failure. But really for me, it's just God redirecting me mm -hmm. like, oh, man, that door closed. But yeah, this door, once you get over here, is is so much brighter, yes. so much more beautiful. Yes. It's so much more friendly. Yes. And it's like 
you have to go through those dark times. Yes, like yes. There literally is, and I don't want to be cliche, cliche, but it's like, it's so true. Yes. Like they're literally wow. without rain, there is no sunshine. Like, and, and I've, the more and more I, I, I fall in love with my journey and my mm. process. Yes. Like I realize that, man, the harder I fall, like the higher I'll rise. Yes. Wow. Every single time. Wow. Every time. But it's like, like there's this uh, this scripture that's been been hard on me, and I don't I don't really remember scriptures like this, mm -hmm. but it's Hebrews eleven one, and it's just talking about faith, wow. literally about faith, and wow. it's you know it's ultimately it's the belief in things that we cannot see yes, yes right and there's yes. so there's things right now in my life mm -hmm. that are present that if i look just six months ago a year ago yeah they were not here right Let, they were not here but i i had to believe that they would arrive because if i didn't like yeah. if i didn't feel like they would get here then maybe they don't arrive but it's like really having a deep seat of faith yeah let me quote that scripture for you i think it's um faith is the substance of things hoped for Ooh. the evidence of things not seen Give me a pulpit. Let me preach real quick. Come on, man. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. I told you I didn't appropriate it in here. There you go. But I love it, man. That man is just it's, it's just awesome. I, I just love it. Now, le let me do this real quick. So, what is it like to work at Ruby Jeans Juicery? What is the environment like? What is the the culture? Uh, culture is something we're we're constantly evolving, constantly building, uh, and I believe it starts for me. Um, but I, I'd like to think that it's a culture of family. Mm. Uh, I look at every location as if it's my grandmother's home. Wow. Right? Her face wow. is huge on every single wall wow. that every location. Mm. Yeah. So I want you to feel like you you've stepped into my grandma's presence. Wow. And for for what I remember and what that what what that meant for me, it okay. was family, it was love, yes. it was comfort, it was trust, it was yes. uh it was home. Yes. You know, it was soul, it was you know, it's humility. Mm, uh, mm. And I think that that is, that's what sets us apart. Yeah. Uh, is, you know, there's a ton of juice bars, yeah. a whole lot of juice bars, True. a whole lot of people that True. make juice, make smoothies. True. Um, but what we embody is something that just feels like home. Wow. That is, that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, what is the vision for Ruby Jeans Juicery? Where, what do you want to do for people? Where do you see it going? Man, I, you know, I'm not one of those like five year planners, <laughs> 10 year planners. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ride my own way, yes, right? Yes. And I want to, I want to go as as God leads me. I always ask Him to light my path. Mm, um, yeah. And so I, you know, I've got some some dreams. Yes, you know, I I yes. know that I know that yes. Ruby Jeans will be a global brand uh, at some point. So, yes. Um, whenever God says yes. says and agrees with that. Um, but that's it, man. I yes. just want to take it one step at a time. That's beautiful. Now, so this morning while I was, because uh, I always do this, uh, my routine in the morning is to like listen to maybe uh, an inspirational book or inspirational teaching. Now, this morning I was listening to Jim Rohn. I don't know if you know who he is. Mm -hmm. But um, he was talking about how most people believe that when they get to some somewhere in life, they'll be happy. When I get this, I'll be happy. When I get that, I'll be happy. Now, he said that that will never happen. You know, you need to have to convince yourself that you're doing good and be happy where you are and not think you're going to be happy when you get there, right? Now, yeah. in line with that, I want to ask you, you being able to succeed this far, do you ever take a break and be like, you know what, I'm killing it, you know? You know what, I, I, I don't. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have those moments where, like, I'll, I'll be moving too fast and then, like, I'll get a glimpse, a glimpse of my grandma's face on a bottle or, yeah. you know, I'll – I'll slow down and enough to gain perspective and kind of step outside of myself. And I have those moments where yes. I shake my head like, wow, God, like <laughs> you're amazing, yes. you know? And I, yes. so no, I don't, I never really, you know, I mean, I get excited about stuff, you yeah. know what I mean? But I, I haven't hit that point where like, yo, I'm doing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we, we have, we have, we haven't arrived to anywhere yes. close to where I think that God is leading us, man. And, I just I think there's uh there's beauty and humility. Yes. Uh, and yes. I just I have so much respect for it and, and honestly, man, think this journey of creating something that is from scratch, yes, it will force you to be humble or, to, or it'll force you out. Yes, yes, wow. Now, who would you say w that inspires you to, or maybe let's do this. Who inspired you as a kid and who inspires you now? I think it's um inspired me as a kid and now. Um I'd have to say my mother yeah. on, on both. Uh, she just, you know, just the hardest working person that I've ever met. Mm -hmm. um, 
Mm-hmm. Very humble. Yes. Very a beautiful soul. Very gentle. Yes. Uh, and the same is has been true now. She's been like my rock for okay. the my entire thirty five years. Yeah. What is your one word that keeps you going? What is your one word? Or maybe two words, or maybe three words. Something that you think. Okay, let's put it this way. What is an advice you've gotten so far in your journey that you think you've been able to carry through, carry on with you that has helped you in your in your, uh, in your journey, basically? Um, <laughs> that's so much, man. Yes. It's so you know, yeah. it's so much. Um, yeah. But I think I think the the biggest word for me is is passion. Yeah. Um, you know, and that passion carries through from for me is God. Exactly. family yes. and success exactly. in, in that order uh, but yeah. it's passion that bleeds through as the co- connective tissue to all three yeah okay now let me get to this section where it's a little bit on the easy flow because i know you heard the kanye west song i played <laughs> earlier now i'm not a big kanye west fan but i've seen the whole thing that's going on right now and i want to see do you have a what is what is your perspective of the whole thing that's going on with him and his transition and the music or whatever he's doing Man, you know, I I tend to stray away from um, things that involve faith yeah. and really, really strong sense of like celebrity and mm-hmm. fanfare. Yeah, uh, I think that for me, God is such a delicate subject. Yes, uh, and it's always a journey, and not not to speak from like this perfect standpoint because yeah. man i fail every single day true, right true. and so i couldn't judge kanye for anything yeah. but for me personally i tend to keep you know like entertainment and celebrity yes, completely yes, separate yes, of yes, my faith yes, yes, uh, yes. so i honestly i don't even pay attention to it i i notice it and then i kind of go the other way go, okay yep Do, have you listened to any of the songs though I couldn't quote anything from my <laughs> one song. I've heard it. I've heard. I tried. I listened to it when it dropped, and I just. I don't know, man. I couldn't. I just couldn't find it. So yeah. I. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, let's do this before we get to a, a, a section uh, where I'm going to ask you three things people do not know about you. Now, what is what would you tell a young kid out there watching you today who who says, "Man, you are my, uh, you know, you are you are you are my icon." What would you tell them to? What What would you tell them? Um, um, I'd say thank you. Uh, I'd say thank you first and foremost. Um, and I would say just, you know, whatever you see in other people, like whatever you like, wherever you look and you draw inspiration from, just yes. know that there's like such an abundant amount mm-hmm. of inspiration in yourself. Exactly. Yes, uh, yes. And, and to just, just look inward. Yes. Wow. That's beautiful. Now let's get to the section where I'm going to ask you, what are three things that no one know, not no one, but people you think people do not know about you. Three things. Uh, I'm afraid of heights. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I like, am too. like I could watch somebody climbing onto a building and my hands would sweat. Yeah. That's, that's how afraid <laughs> of heights I am, brother. Okay. Uh, I love clouds. Okay. And I you know, I think in my my future life, yeah, I will be some sort of philanthropist slash actor slash photographer. Yes, yes. Man, I mean, I think I've been saying uh let me talk about the heights. Um like I didn't know I was gonna heights until I went on a uh, roller coaster that went up to the top. And I lost it. Did you pass out? I, oh, I thought I did. <laughs> I thought I got to my eyes. You no, know, you see the video. Yeah, I was like, just slump. Like, was that you? <laughs> Glasses <laughs> off, falling off. I was um, I was like, who who told me to come here? Like, <laughs> right, whose idea was this? Why am I up here? See, I would I would never even find myself up there. I can look at the roller coaster. Yeah. Like, mm, nah, not today. And the funny thing is, is my brother told me not to go. But I was like, you know, I'm going to do it. It's nothing. But when I got it, like, you were right. Who, who told me to Legs get here? Legs shaking when yeah. you got to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so that's on the side but uh, um man i just want to say this again um really thank you for coming through um thank you for standing strong for kc you know it's uh, it's one thing to you know do what you want to do but it's another thing to actually become embodied with kc you know be able to represent and also inspire younger people because that's what you're doing you're not just doing a, a juice uh 
uh, just a juicery. No, you are inspiring young people to see that a dream can actually become what you say it is. You Thank know? you, man. And I really, I really, I admire you a lot, Thank a you. lot. Um, now, let's get to this section, uh, which is called the drop line section. This Dang, is I was hoping you forgot about the, this. No, <laughs> I cannot forget. <laughs> this is the section that we are known for. The drop line is uh. this. I've, actually, the funny thing is this. Since I started this um, drop line, I've never won once. I'm, I've always been losing. So uh, hopefully I'm going to win you today. Yeah, so, yeah, you probably got this one. I, I, I do know. You have no idea. I'm bad at um, rhymes. So if I if I win you, at least I'll, be, I'll have a belt on my shoulder. Yeah, I won Chris Good in my <laughs> show. I killed it today. <laughs> You know, but yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna explain it. So basically, it's um, kind of like a two-word rap where I say, "I have a laptop without the keys." Drop line. Then you say something. Oh, what without the keys? A laptop without the keys. The laptop that should have a keyboard on it, but I don't have a keyboard on it. It's just like, it's like I do very simple stuff. I have a camera without a lens. Drop line. So it's like in those lines, right? Okay. Now, if you do not remember anything, you lose. But okay. you have to say drop line every single time. So how many times I gotta do this? It it. it Till you do not have any words to say, oh. then you lose. So, but if you still have words to say, I, I we gotta keep going until I lose, which doesn't go so far because my English is not the best. So, <laughs> that's your advantage. <laughs> so that's my excuse. Um, okay, so let's start. Um, I'm gonna do the the most favorite one. Drop line at the beginning. No, no, no. At the end of whatever you say, okay, if you spit, see, if you spit that. a rhyme, you do drop a line. All right. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay, we started. Okay, I'm in a studio without a mic. Drop line. I got a fire with no smoke. Drop line. I got a Google without a search. Drop line. I got a ruby with no jeans. Drop line. I got a juice without an orange. Drop line. I got a roof with no shingles. Drop line. I got a sweat without a shirt. Drop line. I got a kanga with no roof. Drop line. I got a rain without a fall. Drop line. I got a table with no legs. Drop line. I got an insta without a gram. Drop line. I got a clock with no numbers. Drop line. I got a phone without a keys in it. Drop line. I got a bottle with no water. Drop line. I got a bar without a bottle. Drop line. I got a salad with no lettuce. Is drop lines. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? How are you? You should be rapping. You actually should be rapping. I think that should be something you should start actually venture into. That was really good. Thank you so much. Thank you. You oh, want man. me again? We have a, a drop line king again. <laughs> again. I keep people who are banned me every single time. I don't like it, but it's okay. One day I will win this game. One day. But uh, I just want to say, man, thank you for coming thank through. Thank you, man. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for motivating and inspiring. And thank you for your style. Um, you are looking fantastic today. Thank I appreciate you, that. Now, where can people catch you on the internet? Um, the your Ruby Jeans or your your personal account or where, where can they catch you? Uh, my personal handle on on Instagram is at Genuine Juice Guy. Uh, our business handle is Ruby Jeans Juicery. The okay. same for Facebook. Our website is RubyJeansJuicery dot com. Okay. Ruby Jeans Juice on Twitter. Okay. Um, my name Christopher Good okay. on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. In the streets, on doing some service on yes. the Pasel stairs yes. at Whole Foods, 30th and Truce, 11th yes. and Main, anywhere in the city, man. Just okay. say what's up. Awesome. Well, man, thank you guys for tuning in today, man. This is Chris Good, the founder of Ruby Jeans Juicery. And if you guys want to be healthy, this is the place to go. And I'm telling you, he's uh, motivation and he's doing it big time. But yeah. Thank you for tuning in today. This is Fight Up KC. Thank you for being and joining us with this fun episode. We've, we've had a lot of fun. But hey, I'll see you guys next Tuesday. But remember to always stay fired up and pursue your purpose. Bye-bye for now. Hey, you guys. I'm Mel. So make sure you keep watching on Fired Up KC. And I'm Reagan. Make sure you subscribe.